today's uh, people that we hire absolutely choose their employer based upon the corporate responsibility and the community involvement, the commitment to greening, all of these issues today are front and center in terms of our people's objectives. They can walk with their feet every day. And if we don't demonstrate our commitment to this, we don't demonstrate that this matters to us and that it's built into the fabric of our organization, we will not attract and retain the very best people. We will not be able to serve the very best clients. For us, the, the real key is, is building it into the fabric of the organization so that it's routine, it's who we are, it's culturally embedded, and it doesn't become one of those things that you kind of look to in a down environment and say, okay, now we'll just stop this. I mean, from the beginning, it's a matter of working it through the organization, understanding the business imperative, understanding the social imperative, and getting everyone to kind of get excited about it and to say that this is uh, important to the organization. The best thing that he does for me as CEO is give me the license to operate in the firm. The reason why I love my job is that I'm positioned inside the business. And again, I have a license to operate as any other business owner. So, you know, I often feel like uh, the, the, the power of, of my role and the privilege of my role is not, you know, is not the administration and execution of whatever set of resources I'm given at the beginning of the year. It's the ability to work inside our organization and understand the goals of the organization at all different kinds of levels. Ultimately, it's the ability to work inside the corporation, have the license to operate, have a corporate culture that enables me to go talk to the head of recruiting and understand what she's trying to do on campuses and talk about Teach for America or Alternative Spring Break or other ideas that we can do that are, will uh, extend our corporate citizenship or community involvement contributions and at the same time drive uh, you know, one, one of the things that, that makes Evan successful uh, is his preparedness. And I, and I use this, with, I call it five P's. Proper planning prevents poor performance. And, and for every recommendation that comes out of Evan's shop, there's a business case, there's a financial model, there's an impact, a benefits, a cost, a return, um, Whatever you would want to see from a business decision perspective comes to those business leaders. So when Evan meets those business leaders, they have their answers right there. And it's rare that there's more to be had. And so I, I think that that credibility helps create the trust and the respect back from the business leaders to Evan. And when I became CEO, which was uh, two years ago, we moved Evan's positioning up in the organization so that he is two levels higher in reporting than he was before. To me, what's compelling is Barry is a, is a, you know, is a great, hard-nosed CEO that is focused on the success of our business, and he understands what I do and what I'm trying to do. And, and as long as I can operate in a way that's connected to the things that he cares about, social impact and business value, you know, it's, it's sustainable. One of the things that I think relationships are founded on is, is mutual trust and respect. And, and I, I, another phrase that I, I use is that if, if I have a, a yes person working for me, one of us is redundant. <laughs> and, and, and the thing that I, I like about, about the role that, that Evan has and, and, and what he brings to it is that he's willing to tell me when he thinks that I'm wrong. When you have that candor and you have that openness, it, it creates the relationship that then builds the trust and builds the respect in the position.